gets you through my morning every day. Every Ladies morning. and gentlemen, Adelaide's Jody and Hazy on Nova. Jody and Hazy's loose lips. For me, it's crucial. A two-way conversation. Listening, oh, oh, man, you've just got to be able to absorb this information. Would you agree, Jodie Oddy? I agree. I heard every word you said, and I wholeheartedly condone what your thought process is. <laughs> that sounds sort of somewhat sincere. <laughs> Look, it's not all the time. It's just sometimes mm-hmm. your brain sort of drifts off. Well, to be fair, sometimes my brain shuts down because it cannot handle the overload that is Andrew Hayes. Oh, right back of my face. We do a little listening exercise called Loose Lips and what happens is we put some noise cancelling headphones on Joe's and she has to literally read my lips. Mm -hmm. Helps her absorb information. Sure. All right. Are you ready to play this week, Joe? I'm good to go. Noise cancelling headphones are now turned up. Jody cannot hear a word that I'm saying. Oh my God. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't write these, by the way. I want to make babies with you. (laughs) You want to make babies? Is with me. Oh, no. <laughs> really? Oh, okay, noise cancelling headphones off. Oh. Um, yes, yes. Oh. I think you've been. No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> yes, as in you got it correct. You got it correct. <laughs> oh. oh my God, no. he's doubled down. He wants you didn't me hear it before. You he didn't hear it before. Me to have his but I said, <laughs> oh I said to you, I did not write these statements. Who are you, Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters? But also, how is that the first time? That I've uh, said one of these things, and you've got it first up. I don't know. I, I could just read your lips like it's a, a bit abs- scary, isn't oh, it? Man. Wishful thinking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Second statement: noise cancelling headphones are up. Here we go. It takes two to tango. No idea. It takes two to tango. Something about angels with a halo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> last time. Last time. It takes two to tango. Is that your taco? <laughs> <laughs> There's no correlation between that and the first sentence. <laughs> the correct uh, phrase was, it takes two to tango. Oh. oh. Okay. okay. All right, last one. Noise cancelling headphones are now up. Jody yep. can't hear a thing. Save water, drink beer. <laughs> oh, you're, you're going to have to say that again. Save water, drink beer. Something about take 40? Take- <laughs> <laughs> With Barry Bissell. No, incorrect, incorrect. Save water, drink beer. I'm water, drink me. <laughs> <laughs> last time, last time. One more, one more. Okay. Save water, drink beer. Something, something. Oh, I don't know. Just please do it one more time. Save water, drink beer. Take water, drink me. <laughs> no, no. That was pretty close. close. What was it? You kind of somewhat in a creepy way, like re- related to the first one. It was save water, drink beer. Oh. <laughs> I am water, drink me. No, Joes, you are not Jesus Christ. Did you sit down with a cup of tea and watch the presidential debate yesterday? Oh, my very goodness. <laughs> Trump is just as mad, if not madder, we've said before, than a cut snake. Yeah, so Kamala Harris, who's a former prosecutor, just really got under his skin yesterday and was sort of goading him and talking Mm. about the size of his rallies, and she said that people leave out of exhaustion and boredom. (laughs) (laughs) That really irked him. That really got him going. Then he's like, my rallies, we have the biggest rallies, the most incredible rallies in the history of politics. No, you don't, Donald. (laughs) How ridiculous. And then I think she just pushed him so hard that he just came out with a series of unhinged theories that made absolutely no sense. Like, Which, which is what he's done the whole time, by the way. <laughs> and everyone's like, did he just say that? Yeah. yeah, I guess we're going with it. Well, did he just talk about people eating their own dogs? Yeah, apparently this is what happens um, the migrants are doing in Illinois. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. <laughs> uh, got some audio from the dogs in Illinois yeah. at Springfield as well. <laughs> they're not getting eaten. No. No. They're certainly on the offensive. Uh, and what about the vision of uh, of Kamala when this is happening? Mm-hmm. She's just like laughing like people watching would laugh like a genuine like, are you taking the because there is nothing worse than when you're trying to be taken seriously too and you want to have a fight and you're really aggressive than someone laughing in your face. It's yeah, the best. Laughing and shaking their head <laughs> at the same time. Yes. <laughs> um, and then just after that, Taylor Swift came out and endorsed Kamala. Um, 
she took to Instagram and she said, I'm voting for Kamala Harris because she fights for the rights and causes, I believe. Need a warrior to champion them. I think she's steady-headed, gifted, and I believe we can accomplish so much more in this country if we're led by calm, not chaos. And I s- tip my hat to Taylor. I just wonder, I just wonder if if you could choose somebody on this planet right now to endorse you, mm. who's more important than Taylor Swift? Like, yeah. it would be Taylor Swift, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. And she posted a picture of her and her cat and signed off the childless cat lady. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Taylor, that's good. Which is obviously... <laughs> A bit of a uh, crack at Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance, who labelled a number of prominent Democrats a bunch of childless cat ladies. Wow. What a beautiful circus this is going to be. Except this time, it's not one old bloke who doesn't know where he is and needs to be pointed in the right direction versus Mm. an absolute fruitcake. Mm. It seems to be one that is pretty normal and reasonable. Pretty pretty sane. There's still an orange fruitcake there, though. Yeah, Mm. very orange. (laughs) Isn't he? Mm. Oh, well, watch this space. See how it pans out. Jodes, every now and then a headline hits me in the face and I just get so concerned that I almost have to lie down. Really? Okay. What's happening? Look, I'm just going to say this to you and I don't want you to freak out, okay. but let me explain it, all right? Mm-hmm. A woman has been hospitalised after a gang of vicious otters tore at her skin while she was on a run. That's right. A bevy of eight hungry beasts charged through a recreation park in Malaysia looking for food. They spotted the middle-aged woman, surrounded her while plunging their shark-like teeth into her legs, piercing her pink like a fitness leggings. She was pictured sitting on a curb in tears with several deep wounds across her shins. Her arms and legs were covered in blood. There's chilling footage of this, oh. and it shows the same ferocious otters running across a parking space where they're seen moments after attacking the woman. The shaking jogger was taken to a nearby hospital while a wildlife team was sent to the park to monitor the otters. They were then spotted making gang signs and flashing various weapons. I made that last bit up. But 96% of that is true. Whoa. Uh, I'm here to tell you something. Mm. Otters, immediate thoughts? Well, they're cute and friendly. Mm, they're so cute and, and friendly, oh, aren't they? Oh, come oh, here, little otter, give you a kiss. Oh, oh, they oh, hold oh. hands when they're floating down the stream. Oh, they do. And guess what? <laughs> I'm here to debunk. Uh, the rumour and the thought process that otters are indeed cute. Can I um, just float something here? Is there a chance this is just a bad batch of otters? No, no. <laughs> I think this is the real otters. Is this it? is the this is a real representation of otter behaviour. Really? How about this little known fact that people didn't know about otters? Go on. While mating, male otters grab onto the female and bite her nose, sometimes hard enough to draw blood and cause deep wounds. The act sometimes entails a male holding the female's head underwater mm-hmm. as the two spin and writhe under the surface. Right. A good number of the females drown in the process. Goodness. Others die from injuries sustained during their romp. Male otters have also been observed continuing the mating process even after the female is dead. I'm going to press this. Did you say otters or oddies? (laughs) (laughs) I wondered. I wondered if there was a link. Because here's the the second thing that otters slash oddies do. Male oddies have been observed (laughs) exhibiting hostage behaviour when they're hungry Mm. by taking babies away from females and essentially holding them underwater until the female brings him food. (laughs) Females Mm. have also been spotted taking food from other otters. However, they tend to be much more selective about the food they steal Mm. than their male counterparts. Well, I mean, Greg does that. For goodness sake, Greg. if, If he doesn't have Oreos, you know, in half a second flat... I'm in the bath, face down. <laughs> bath face down. Which one of your children has he used as bait, as hostage, to get some Oreos? <laughs> I've said it before. I'll say it again. Um, otters, very cute. Oddies, stay clear. <laughs> This weekend, Jodes, Sunday morning is the City Bay Fun Run. I'm competing with a bunch of friends if I have it on Hazy. 12 Ks for you? 12 Ks for me. I'm just going to really, really... Come maybe last. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I fear, which is why I'm going to enlist some help for you. You're welcome. Oh, great. I We are about to chat to a woman who has won this thing three times. 
Oh, okay, okay, awesome. So she's got the key ingredients. Yeah, is she is she willing to wait for 45 minutes after she finishes yes. before I get there so <laughs> yeah. she can give you some tips for next year? Well, let's find out. Fresh off an amazing campaign in Paris is the beautiful Jess Stenson. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Have we... Uh, okay, firstly, let's talk about this. Have we recovered from the marathon in Paris at the Olympics? I, I think I have. Okay. I've um, done a few sessions back at McKinnon Parade now, and I'm fired up for this Sunday. So my legs are, yeah, they're feeling recovered from those hills. <laughs> okay. So, so Jess, just looking at the records here, you do it in about, you do 12Ks in around the last attempt was 39 minutes. Is that right? Yeah, I think my PB's around that mark. Yeah. Okay. Do, so, do you know, I, I, I reckon it's smaller than that, isn't it, Jess? What's your actual PB? I think it's. Thirty-eight, forty. <laughs> 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 You're so modest. You're so modest. I, I did look it up because I'd love to try and beat it. So, um, yes, yeah, before chatting today, I, I had a look. I think it was in twenty-two. I think that was my fastest. So, time. thirty-eight divided by twelve. What are those splits? Like, I'm terrible at maths. What sort of? How many minutes for a kilometre? Yeah, I'm not even sure what my splits were, but um, I have to check. It'd be maybe three. Tw- well, oh, sure. Yeah. That's stupid. Yeah. See, see, what's the difference? And this is the key difference between you and me, Jess, yeah. is that your average she pace... She likes to keep her shirt on when yeah, she's running. That. And also, <laughs> Jess's average pace is yeah. what uh, most of us, when we're involved in football clubs, are going for, for our one, just one, one kilometre. Yeah. That's the time that we want to do. Uh, so, Jesse, if you just say, okay, all right, I'm so, I'm making you do a lot of mass on the run here, but just say the marathon at the Olympics, right... It, what is the equivalent, your splits there, to running on a treadmill? Because I, my top speed on a treadmill, 12. <laughs> so I wh- think it ends up being around 17. <gasps> <laughs> That's ridiculous, Jess. <laughs> it's a different oh feel, though. If I were to crank the treadmill to that, I'd feel like I was going to fly off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, that's unbelievable. Hey, Jess, um, there's probably a lot of first-time runners uh, on Sunday, and, and you've won this event so many times. What, what's your what's your go-to tip for a lot of people, including myself? I've done it once before, but I, I'm actually quite nervous. Yeah. Um, usually I talk about not going too crazy at the start, like having a pace that you've been practicing at training, in training, and trying to sort of, find your rhythm and stick to that pace. But the start can be pretty chaotic with elbows flying and yeah. you know, you're trying to weave through the crowd. So often those first few Ks might be quite a lot slower because you're just trying to find your feet. And uh, I think once you get to the Anzac Highway, that's when you can focus on tuning into that pace that you've been practicing in training and hope that you're going to have something down um, Jetty, uh, yeah, Jetty Road at the end to to kick down with so um it's about soaking up the atmosphere and remembering that at six k's you're going to have everyone waiting at Corolta park cheering for you and you can always you know, get a bit of a buzz through there um and it is just slightly downhill so remember that as well try and like just imagine yourself <laughs> running downhill <laughs> yeah um jess i want to talk to you about paris because we haven't spoken to you um post olympics what was the experience like you taking your husband and two kids <laughs> before an olympic campaign if you had your time again would you take the whole family did it work out well <laughs> Yeah, I'm really glad they all came. I I think I would have been miserable over there on on my own, just you know, FaceTiming. It was so nice to have them there in person. We went over um, four weeks prior to the game, so we did three weeks um, of high altitude training, and that was a really nice um, family friendly location. Billy had been there before the Commonwealth Games in 2022, so he was itching to get back. Ellie obviously had no idea where in the world she was, but <laughs> she was soaking it up too. And um, and then, yeah, in once we moved into Paris, I actually went into the village. So that was a tough gig for Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> he had um, his wonderful mum um, helping with the kids as well while I was uh, living with the other athletes in the lead up to the race. And yeah, that it was an incredible family experience. So whilst it was hectic, the flight over was actually easier than the flight back, which the flight back, it didn't matter. I didn't have a race to prepare for yeah, anymore. So, yeah. Um, yeah. so little known fact, um, but Harper and Billy 
go to both Crash and Kindy together have done. They're going to get married eventually. Um, <laughs> but she sent you a little voicemail because um, you. she turned to me before the Olympics and she said, Billy's mum's running at the Olympics. So you're not known as... Je- oh, no. That's such a good flex too, by the way. Isn't it? Isn't it? Billy's mum. Um, so you're not known as Jess in our house. You're Billy's mum, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, well, he's, yeah, his ELC, they sent um, a video of them all chanting, go Billy's mum. And so now... <gasps> When I pick him up from ELC, they all say, hi, Billy's mum. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so cute. It's awesome. Mm. Hey, Jess, uh, we love everything that you do. We're, we're so proud of you, your efforts in Paris as well. And um, looking forward to you Thank probably you. winning again on, on Sunday. Like, <laughs> how, how do you – what, what's it like uh, running when um, there's no one in front of you? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's going to be tough competition on Sunday. So um, we've got Izzy, Bat Doyle. Um, South Australian Jen Gregson and um, my yeah, training partner Caitlin Adams. So I think there'll be a a big pack, and uh, yeah, I have to <laughs> squeeze everything out of myself. But I've um, seen you training as well, Hazy. You're looking fit, so don't <laughs> underestimate oh, don't what you that. can do out there. Oh. So I would say I would say Jess, <laughs> yeah, uh, training around the uh, uni loop. Yeah. And, and I've told the story a few times as well, Jess, that uh, Kane uh, managed to wiggle his way into your training regime. And even Kane Corns, who we'd sit there and be like, he's such a freak runner. Yeah. It was always like I'd explain to people, like, yeah, Kane would stay with Jess as long as he could. But then eventually she'd have to say to him, I'll catch you at the finish line, champion. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Jess, can you do me a favour favor on Sunday? Just if you see Hazy at the finish line, yeah. just walk past him and go, that was cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for the chat, Jess. We appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. See you, Billy's mum. <laughs> How good is that? City Bay yep. this Sunday as well. Still time to register. Um, really, really good chance just to burn some calories and then reward yourself. That's yeah. how I look at it. Exactly right, mate. Exactly right. That's how you justify your little beer at 11 a.m. on a Sunday morning. On a Sunday. It works, doesn't it? <laughs> It's a really important day today, Jones. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's Are You OK Day, and it's really important to follow your gut on this one. If you think someone is is not doing well, um, then it's important that you just ask the question, Are You OK? But it doesn't always work that way for men, does it? It certainly doesn't. And, and what I have noticed, and trust me, I'm still trying to work it out in terms of the differences between males and females. Oh, I know. Um, Girls so much better at communicating yeah. and so much better at instantly saying exactly what's going on mm. in her most deep thoughts. Mm. Blokes are so opposite, and yeah. I'm one of them. And ask my wife, it's taken years to uncover, get through so many different layers. Yeah, you're like an onion. So so this is this is the thing with Are You Okay Day. It's such an incredibly important initiative, mm. but that's, that's the first layer. And for blokes, there's so many different layers. The first question is, are you okay? And for most blokes, me, myself, even if I wasn't okay, my immediate response would be, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. And then you move on. You yeah. okay? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, sir. Mm. And nothing's achieved. So it's an interesting one because I, like yesterday, went for a walk with a girlfriend and from the minute we see each other, it's like, bang, let's get to the hard stuff. Like, what's going on? Da, 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 da. You would never catch up for a mate, go for a walk and just really drill down on what's going on in your life, would you? you don't. And I caught up with a couple of really good mates on the weekend. We went to Pirate Life and we had, I don't know, 40, 50 beers each. I reckon. <laughs> 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 but you don't really talk about that. Like, you, you maybe, and I've done it a couple of times, but we're talking about old times, we're talking about football, and that's the way of connecting. But then the most important thing for this is the follow up questions, you know? Well, what's going on? Open ended questions where you can actually, because blokes, um, you chisel away at us enough, we will start giving you little bits and pieces, and then you will start finding out exactly what's going on inside. It is unbelievable to me that, like, my husband will go and play golf. So that's six hours on a golf course with his either his mates or his family or whatever. And there might be a marriage issue going on or a really significant life event. And I'll say to him afterwards, well, what did such and such say about such and such? And he's like, I don't, I don't know. know. We didn't talk about it. <laughs> we didn't talk about it. And that's I'm what like, do. what do you talk about for six hours? And they just basically mm. give each other SH1T yep. the whole time. 100%. And that's it, our love language. <laughs> <laughs> it, it actually is. It genuinely is. Uh, the way that Australian blokes... Um, show their affection is to give each other crap. It's so, a weird one, isn't it? Yeah. So, can I ask, have you ever felt really, really down, borderline depressed? Have you 
Yeah, I know. From from what I know now, absolutely I yeah. have. But at the time, and I was much younger, I didn't know what it was. Yeah. And I'd been brought up and in such an environment where, like, you need to understand how lucky you are to be living here and doing these things, mm. that it wasn't an option. Okay. But then you sort of realise later in life that, yeah, it can affect absolutely anyone. We, yeah. I've spoken about this a couple of times, but when we were 25, mm. and when you're 25, I feel like... You're starting to work it all out. Yep. You're still very much probably in the prime mm. of, of your youth, but you're still not established. Yeah. So a really, really close friend of ours from school um, committed suicide. Mm. And it absolutely, like, it knocked us Yeah. As a, as a group. It completely knocked us. And I remember getting the call from a mate driving down King William Road, and I still remember every single second because he said, I need you to pull over right now because I've got something to tell you. Mm. And I remember we it, it was like a school reunion. Mm. Um, it was northern northwest New South Wales. And we were sitting there absolutely rattled. At the same time, it's actually really good to see so many people. We're looking at his parents, and we're speaking to his parents, and they're all saying the same thing, his wife. We didn't know. We didn't know. Uh, he never spoke about it, and all of a sudden he got himself in such a state. Mm. We felt like that was the only option. And we all sort of spoke and said, this is, in a way, a situation like that, if there is a positive to take from it, we all said, we don't want our parents to go through this, our friends, like, this this is the lesson. Mm. Um, but I tell you what, it's a crap lesson to go through. And especially when you know that it's avoidable if blokes can just talk a little bit more. Yeah, because I think... I think for men and, and everyone who feels suicidal like that, it's you get yourself into a state where you're convinced that the world would be better off without you. Yeah, and that's exactly what he is because he, he left a note mm -hmm. and it was along the lines of, guys, you can stop stressing now. You don't have to worry about me. I'm doing you a favour. And, and you sit there and go, that is that so is ridiculous. <laughs> but then also when you understand just how destructive bad mental health can be, mm. you, 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 unless you've been through it, you, you don't understand just how powerful your brain is and mm. what it can achieve in a bad sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, 13, 11, 14, of course, yep. for anyone who's going through anything, even if it's just a talk. But also, mm. today is about asking a question, but not just for today. Mm. It, it doesn't need to be held just for are you okay day. Like, mm. every day. Like, I've got mates who, who want to talk, and it's really, really nice, mm. and I need to be pushed and prodded, but also I want it. Yeah. So it's a, it's a strange dynamic. We're also in a time now with blokes, like, just just chat. It's not... It's not, you know, the stereotypical, it's not wimpy or like it used to be, that mm. disgusting stereotype. It's 2024. It's done. We're allowed to talk and we're allowed to talk about our bloody emotions. Yeah. I mean, you talk about suppressing your feelings. I would beg to differ. They're normally written all over your face <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you're annoyed. They come, they come out through these brown lines. <laughs> <laughs> quite prominent, aren't they? <laughs> oh, thank you for sharing that story. It's awful, but also if it opens up the conversation with people, then that's a great thing. So well done. 100%. It is Are You Okay Day and start a conversation with a mate mm. and start it from there and keep going. Don't just start at that and finish that question. Jodes, two words to describe your flawless husband. Stunning, brave. Oh, and stupid. Do you agree? That's three words. Yeah. You're someone out. Which yeah. one is it? Yeah. Stunning and stupid. Yeah. <laughs> he has joined a new gym, right? And um, it's working really well for him because I did not realise, but he's going to a gym with a class full of women. Yep. So essentially the ratio is 1 to 12. Right? Is it 1 to 12 as in 12 women, 12 1 Greek? Women, 1 Greek. <laughs> Good right, luck, and, Good and luck, so Greg. he's going to do these running classes. It's working really well for him. He's dropped a lot of weight, but he's being a bit of a wanker about the whole thing. Yes, I know he is. Uh, I can imagine Greg in a situation like this because he's very, very. He's a smooth talker. Smooth. He's, he's a proper he's smart. A he's a smart aleck. <laughs> yes. I can see Greg in a situation where it's one on twelve, being like, "Hey, lady's got an idea for you. Yeah. How about I be Charlie and you be my angel?" <laughs> 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 See how that goes down, Greg. Yeah. See how that goes down. So I didn't realise that he's a, he'd assembled this little harem because he goes at like five o'clock in the morning, right? And then the gym posted a photo of him and he kind of sidles up to me in the kitchen and he's like, oh, I got a bit of feedback on that photo that Platform posted. You know he talks really fast like that and doesn't take a breath. Yes. And I was like, oh, yeah, what was the feedback? Oh, just about the ratio of girls to guys, you know, just a couple of lads just having a bit of a laugh. And I'm like, well, show me. And I have a look and Ted said they've taken a photo of him in the middle of these 12 women all flexing. And I'm like, 
mate, what are you doing in this space? And he has been consistent. He can't. Oh. Okay, tell everyone about Zone 5, please. Oh, Zone 5. I don't really understand what Zone 5 is. It's some sort of area you get to when you're doing some pretty intense exercise. So but not everyone gets into Zone 5. No, your heart rate is so high and you're working so hard that you went to Zone 5. Yeah. But he just likes to tell us all about it. So <laughs> he sent me a message the other day with a screenshot of <laughs> his heart rate monitor in Zone 5. He said, <laughs> I'm in Zone 5, no reception. Can you let Jodes know? <laughs> I spoke to him and I said, "Mate, you spend so much time in Zone Five. You should buy. You should think about purchasing some real estate." He said, "There's no point. There's no one else here." <laughs> I do wonder. He went to the gym this morning, so I, I wonder if he visited Zone Five Town again. Well, well, yeah, well, actually, population yeah. one. No reception, but uh, we've actually buzzed him on the landline. Oh, really? <laughs> live from Zone Five. Is that you, Greg? Morning, guys. How was your session? Uh, it wasn't bad, actually. How was the bevy of women? Yeah, right. So one in 12. One in 12 in that photo. And let, let's just say, there are so many hot women at this gym that we go to. And Greg always makes sure he gets the one instructor, Erin, who's like blonde and super tall and super gorgeous. That's a coincidence. I feel like this is a bit of a please explain right now. And I guess um, it's a bit of a small sample size that you've used there, that photo. What? You've got this photos with you and more women. <laughs> <laughs> There's more photos like it. No, in Zone Five, I don't really, you don't really pay attention to that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, right. All right, well, look, you get back to it. Jump in the ice bath with all your harem. No, I'm actually going home to look after your kids. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna say I love the show. I made the switch last week. Did you? <laughs> Well, Hazy, one of the best shows on television at the moment is The Amazing Race, the celebrity edition. It is on Sundays on 10 and 10 Play. It's a magnificent show. And I I don't know how to say this without sounding creepy, but possibly one of the hottest women of my sort of era is Nat Bass. And she joins us now. Is that... I, 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 I sound creepy. I'm so sorry, Nat. Just say it. No, I just, it. I just said it. I just said it out loud. Nat, better Joe says it than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nat, I don't know. <laughs> um, Nat, what an adventure for you and your sister Mel, but it's come to an end. Gosh, I know, way too soon. Look, it was. it's honestly been one of the highlights of my life to be able to do a show like that at any point, but then to do it with my sister and... Um, She's been a massive, massive fan of the show ever since she was little. And, um, you know, she hasn't traveled a hell of a lot. So to be able to, like, go to crazy places and do pretty wild and wonderful things, it was it was just unreal. Like, honestly, like, even though we got out, you know, someone has to get out. And, unfortunately, we took a wrong turn and this led to this and that led to that. And, yeah, and then that was it. I mean, your chosen charity was the Black Dog Institute as well, Nat, and you've been pretty open yeah. about your battles with depression. So this is a cause really super close to your heart, isn't it? Yeah, super close to my heart. I mean, the Black Dog Institute has been a part of my life for a long time, actually, probably my early 20s. You know, the research that they do is so important. There's, the statistics are so high. Suicide rates are up more than ever. Uh, suicide prevention is at the heart of everything that they do. And it's just a great place for people who have mental ill health, but also people who know someone who has mental ill health and doesn't really know what to do. Um, the research is, you know, a necessity in this day and age. Do you know, Nat, oh, it's really funny you should talk about this because I was thinking about it the other day and I was thinking, have I ever had proper, proper depression? And I would say definitely I had it when I was 17, 18 and then it came back yeah, right. again when I was early yeah. 40s. And I'm just yeah. always curious about people who've had experience with depression. Do you think it's something that comes and goes, ebbs and flows, or do you think it's something that always sits below the surface? Yeah, I think, look, people. some people are predisposed to it. Some people, there is, like, you know, some evidence about hereditary stuff. And, obviously, life dishes, dishes us out so many, you know, hard things at different times. And, like, I might feel like one day I'm, like, two steps forward and, like, I'm so positive and I'm grounded and then I, like, get sent, you know, thrown backwards. So, mm -hmm. look, for me, it's a constant. Like, every day I have to be mindful of it. Every day I have to try and do those things that I know that make me feel better and that's trying to ride those waves with a little bit more ease, you know. And also I think when you get older too and you do have kids, which I do, I've got four girls, you're very mindful wow. that you don't want to let on to them that mummy's sad, you know. It's, 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 uh, it's really, in yeah, look, it's interesting because as a parent you just never know whether you're doing the right thing, right? You're like, oh, should I hide my emotions or should I spread them out? 
I unfortunately or fortunately, I'm yet to figure this out, is that I'm pretty open about it. I'm pretty open to the kids that I have to work really hard at it and on it and it's it can be daily and sometimes it hits me in the face and, and, and it's really hard for myself to get myself back up but mm. I want them to know that it is possible um, and that life will dish out lots of different things and that they can pick themselves up and sometimes it might take an hour and sometimes it might take a day but you will get there. Hey Nat, geez, mm. it's really exciting news. <laughs> The road is about. What a real oh, transition oh, from you, Andrew. Oh, let's go for a <laughs> Let's pivot in a much different direction because this this is really cool. Road traders are back. How exciting. Ah, uh, I know. We've been doing so many gigs lately. It's been just an absolute blast. It's actually the 20th anniversary of Booty Child this year, oh, which is wild. So whoa. doesn't that make you all feel old? Yes, yeah. it does. Yeah. <laughs> Sucked in. <laughs> <laughs> um, you still get the same feelings yeah. on stage, and is is it as fun as it's ever been? Because sometimes you know when you, you you go away from something and you pick it back up, you're like, oh my gosh, I, I, I miss this. You know what? It's actually been more fun than it was. I think because we're all older and dare I say wiser. Um, we I don't know. Like there's just this mass appreciation of you know the success that we had and. And, you know, then growing up having children and coming into a different phase of life. And, yeah, it's just, it's an absolute ball. And we, we don't, we're not taking it for granted. We're just enjoying it. And if we stop enjoying it, we probably won't do it anymore, you know? Absolutely. Well, Nat Bass, thank you so much for joining us. Um, well done on everything that you achieved on The Amazing Race. It was so great to watch you and your sister Mel on it. And thanks for having a chat with us today. Thanks, guys. Ah. Um, can we talk about the sassiness of Tiger Mum, please? Oh, I know. We all know we've got a good-looking Premier, right? Yeah. Hot Mally, we like to call him mm. on this show. <laughs> we. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you've got the team aspect with that. Peter Malinowskis, but it has not escaped the attention of the Tiger Mum on the Chase Australia because this happened last night. I'm from Adelaide. Yes. And I had a bit of a brain fade then, thinking about how good Peter looks in his swimsuit. He's a really good looking fit guy, and I got so distracted. You do know this is the chase, not the bachelor, right? <laughs> Peter Malinaskis could go on the bachelor if he wasn't already married. All right, enough, enough, enough. Well right done, Tiger Mum. Yeah. We're all thinking it. Oh, We're all thinking it. She just said it. I love that for her. The man looks good in a swimsuit. And, and I didn't watch a lot of The Chase Australia because I'm obviously on um, on Channel 10 at all given times. Um, but she's normally quite serious. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So. I mean, that's what we've always said. Um, to really understand if you are indeed a, a blood... Um, red-blooded? A red-blooded human or a robot. We'll just show you a photo mm. of Peter Malinowskis in his swimmers. And if your heart mm. starts racing, then yep. guess what? You're a genuine human. Yeah, absolutely. I said that. And you're heavy into men, which is good too. <laughs> That's also good. Yep.